Hey there! Today we're going to talk about this poem, and it's very interesting. I remember the days of old. The first noodless rollerball that was launched. I've reviewed it. You can check back, but you have to go way back in my channel, because it's, it's a while ago. I'm not talking about the Conrad rollerball. I'm talking about their original, I think it was called the Nib Creeper rollerball. Very nice pen. I loved it. But it was a rollerball. And there's nothing wrong with rollerballs, that's just not my preferred pen. And then Alex sent me some YouTube, uh, sorry, some eBay links. He said, check these out, there's some cheap pens, you may like a few. And I found that same pen, but as a fountain pen, same body, but with a nib and not a rollerball tip. And I thought, bye. It was $18, which is not extremely expensive, it's not extremely cheap, but as fountain pens go, I would say it's not a bad deal. Um, and this pen, I think, has a lot going for it. Because for $18, you get a piston-filled fountain pen, which is not bad. The piston works, it doesn't leak, and it draws up a pretty crazy amount of ink, which I may just actually measure in a second. Okay. I cover the parts of the pen, tell what I like about it, what I don't like about it, and I'll do a writing sample. But before we do that, what is this pen? This is a dollar pen. And no, that doesn't mean it costs one dollar, uh, as the friendly gentleman from nibs.com wrote in his website. I, I love that remark, because I always thought they cost a dollar too. Alas, that's not how it is. A dollar pen, as far as I know, they're made in Pakistan. And, um, well, that's it. So fascinating. What's so fascinating about this pen? Well, it's got a couple of fascinating features going. Um, first of all, top of the cap. Can you see that? Let me get my hand out of the light. That's a dollar symbol, because they're the dollar pens. And on the clip it says, dollar. Because a dollar makes me holler, honey boo boo child. You know the honey boo boo child. I know you do. Okay, we got the cap. The cap. Clear demonstrator. Oh yeah! There is no white inner cap. You can see the nib, you can see the section. It's beautiful. I love it. This is what all companies should do. If you make a demonstrator and you have a clear cap, don't put a white inner cap in because it blocks the view and it's freaking ugly. Okay? Now, rest of the pen. You got the barrel. The barrel looks cool because it's a piston filled pen and it's a demonstrator. So you get to see all these nice little aspects, all that, that is ink has a decent amount of ink in there and I just love it. Okay, you take the cap off and you get the nib. Is the nib spectacular? No. Mine was dry, scratchy, um, but I'll work on that. That's alright. It says, what does it say? It says Iridium Point. Yeah, that was to be expected. And it has the dollar logo engraved in there. Not laser engraved. It's actually really truly engraved in there. Which is nice. No breather hole. Fascinating little feed. Section. Section is black, plastic, uh, tapered. Let me just show you the shape there. It's pleasant to hold. I've always liked this, although it's a smaller pen and I generally like bigger pens. The shape of the section I find pleasant to use, even if you have relatively large hands, long, thick fingers. It's still pleasant to hold, even when unposted. It's big enough and you can definitely post it and just use it. Um, Word of warning, this is plastic, and it looks like I could actually crush this with two fingers. It's, well, yeah, no, it's, it's pretty hard, but I, I can feel it give when I, when I push down on it. So, you have to be a little careful. There is a center band, which should uh, help against cracking, but even so, uh, I, I would be careful. It is fairly thin plastic. You can post it. And then it's a nice, pleasant-to-use pen, so that's that's pretty cool. Now, one of the things that I absolutely love, it's a piston-filled pen that means a lot of ink. Look at that, that's all ink, so you get a lot of ink. And right now, I'm reaching around for a sample vial, 
and I want to see how much ink is in there. Now, one of the things that I just love that's a great design feature is that you have a, an actual blind cap, which you can take off. And these things always get lost because they're round, they will roll off your desk, get under your desk, get under the cupboard, whatever, get under grandma, whatever's present in the room. So this pen is beautiful because you take the cap and you post it, and then you unscrew the blind cap, and the blind cap won't go get out, will not fall, because it's in the cap securely. Now that's beautiful. Okay, got a sample vial here. This is inked up. I, I think this is about pretty much the full capacity. There's a little bit of an air bubble. Let's see how much ink we can get in there. I have written a bit with it, so maybe it could hold three drops of ink more or something. Um, so this is over one milliliter of ink. I think it's 1.1 or 1.2, something along those lines. Um, <clears throat> that is not bad at all. For a pen of this magnitude, this inexpensive, this small, such an, a, a narrow barrel, I think it's quite impressive. Um, <clears throat> the piston, <clears throat> sorry, you can see the piston operates pretty smoothly. And another beautiful thing is, let me just refocus there, sorry. Another beautiful thing is you can disassemble the whole thing. So for those of you who are like me and like to take pens apart, everything comes off, comes out. Nib and feet are friction fit. You can screw out the whole piston unit, grease everything up. It's fantastic. I love it. So, there you have it. Um, let me just screw that back into place. I think we need to take a couple of measurements, but before that, uh, let me just say what I like about it, what I don't like about it. Well, an $18 pen, I think you could do worse. Will you get the smoothest writing experience ever? No. Expect to have to work on the nib a little bit. But the design, I like a lot. It has a lot going for it. Piston filled. Blind cap gets stored into the cap. Nice section, pleasant to use, can be disassembled for $18. I think that's a pretty nice deal. And it's a fountain pen. That's cool. Things I don't like about it, well, as I said, the plastic. I, I can definitely see this developing cracks with a lot of use. If you th just throw this into your bag, well, not in your bag, but in your bag, things may crack. It's that simple. But, in all, pretty cool pen. Measurements. Well, wait, that's probably not going to be a whole lot. It's all plastic. Yeah, it comes down to 10 grams, light pen. Measurements. I get 122 millimeters capped, uncapped. <clears throat> I get 116 millimeters section diameter at the narrowest point I get eight millimeters in the middle almost nine and at the end near the barrel about uh, just under ten nine point eight nine point nine or something and that's all this to it so here you got the pen I think you need to see it in action uh, you need to see what the issues are with the nib and that's all this to it I hope this was useful eBay dollar pen and uh, that's it so uh, I'll see you later bye bye okay let's do a bit of writing with the dollar pen the nib is well fine I would say and the ink is gerbin Poussière de Lune, which is hardly going to fit. Yeah, there we go. The paper is Rhodia, and you'll see what the issue with the pen is. It writes, but it's dry. It's a dry writer. Also, it's a bit scratchy. Um, which is one thing, but I don't particularly like 
the dryness. <clears throat> so I was thinking maybe we should do something about that. This is Chanel, my knife, um, and it's metal, and it has this nice little thing I can put the pen on. I just put that on there, and I push up a bit. Yep. Very soft metal we got there. <laughs> Very soft. Okay, well it was a cheap pen, that was to be expected. Let me just clean Chanel off the ink. And now it's wet. See the difference between this and that? Now this is a wet pen and now it writes the way I want it to write and as you can see that was a few seconds of work. I have a video on that which I'm not trying to plug or anything but if you want to see that it's called making nib wetter in seconds and there you go. That's all there's to it. Make sure you don't lift the, the nib off of the feet. That's what happened. So when you looked at the nib like this, uh, you know what? I got a fancy camera now I can zoom in and show you. Um, you got the, uh, where do I have some type of pointing device? Okay, I'm going to use a desk pen here. What you see here is the feed, and they see the nib. And I, I was a bit too enthusiastic, and I actually lifted the nib of the feed, so it was pointing up. There was a gap right there. That hampers ink flow significantly, so make sure you don't do that. If it happens, just turn the thing around, put your thumb on the feed, and push down again and you're going to bend the nib down a bit. It's, it's very simple. Uh, as I said, more information in that video. Um, see, it starts up easily, it's beautiful, and right now, it's a nice little gusher of the pen, which is what I like. Um, now, what else have we got there? What can I, is there anything else I can show you? Um, probably not. No, you just open up the space between the tines a bit, and as I said, more information in that other video. Um, Let's do a bit of fast writing, see how well it keeps up. No skipping, nothing good. I already had a look at the wetness. As you can see, you get a nice even patch of ink there. One thing, by the way, that may happen if you do this trick, if the pen gets wetter, it may get a bit broader. As you can see, this was very fine, and uh, this was, uh, well, not, basically. That's just a bit, well, a very skinny medium, I would say. <clears throat> what about line variation? Well, as far as I know, there is none. It's a very fine nib to start with, and it's also quite... Although it was easy to bend, it's not very springy, it's just soft metal. Um, and that's all that's to it. This is what I can squeeze out. Now, the final thing I should do is just do a bit of reverse writing. I made it nice and wet. It's not scratchy. This is actually a pleasant pen to use upside down for those of you who, who care about such things. Um, very smooth. This is, well, this may just be the smoothest pen I've ever used upside down. Impressive. Um, after I worked on it, maybe it was... I, I'm pretty sure, considering how dry it was before, I think, before I, I did this trick, if I would have reversed it, it would just have been excessively dry, probably illegible. So there you have it. Um, I hope this was useful. And um, I'll gladly see you later. Bye-bye.